Before we begin this lesson, uh, you are going to need a uh, calculator and your reference tables to follow along because we're going to be learning some new stuff. It's fairly math intensive. Uh, that's the next portion of this class is incorporating a significant amount of math. Uh, don't freak out too much. We're just multiplying, dividing, and adding today. So the math's not that difficult, but you will need a calculator in order to follow along. So today we are starting a new topic, which is the mole. And not the furry animal that lives in the ground and digs up my yard, uh, but the mole is actually a uh, chemistry concept. It, uh, the term mole comes from the, I believe it's Greek word moles, which means pile of stuff. Uh, but the mole is the SI unit for quantity. We have liters for volume. We have meters for distance. We have moles for quantity. If you're a baker, you might be familiar with using the dozen for quantity. Well, chemist, well, instead of counting baked goods like a baker does, chemists are counting uh, molecules and atoms, which are way smaller. So we need a much larger unit, right? The mole is also known as Avogadro's number. It's named for the Italian scientist Amadeo Avogadro. And one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd items, or 6.022 is how it appears on your reference tables. If we want to use some more significant figures. So if we write that out in expanded form, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. It's this number, which is six hundred and two sextillion, which is an absolutely massive number. That's why we use scientific notation for this. Right. Um. If you had three and a half moles of copper, for instance, you would have 2.11 times 10 to the 24th atoms of copper. I got that by taking 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd and multiplying it by 3.5. Uh, in case you forget what this number is, it is on your reference tables on the very first page, the very top, it says Avogadro's number 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles is a mole. So it is right there on page one of your reference tables. I mean, this is a good number to just know for this class. We're going to be using it a lot. But if you forget it, it's right there ready for you. Now, what makes the mole significant is there is a relationship between grams and mass and moles. So one mole of an element equals its average atomic mass in grams. So for instance, if we find potassium on our reference tables, see the potassium, its uh, atomic mass is 39.10 atomic mass units. Well, if you have 39.10 grams of potassium, then you have one mole of potassium and so you would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of potassium. This allows us to count atoms by weighing them. Similarly, if we pick any other element on here, for instance, silver, 107.87 is its atomic mass, or this is also known as the molar mass because it's the mass of a mole. If you have 107.87 grams of silver, that's one mole of silver, or 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of silver. Yeah, so the average atomic mass is also known as the molar mass. And so this gives us a relationship between grams and number of particles, which will become very significant in our next unit, which we do, which is called stoichiometry, where we're going to take chemical equations and the mole concept and use it to quantitatively analyze chemical reactions. So that's where we're ultimately going to. That's our next unit. But for this unit, 
we're just going to be going between grams and moles, number of particles, right? So I have this little graphic organizer of mole town where you can convert between particles and moles using Avogadro's number, and you can convert between moles and mass using the molar. All right. Now, just like in Hampstead, where there is no bypass, you cannot go directly from particles to mass. You have to go from particles to moles and then from moles to mass. But this gives us the relationship between atoms, moles, and grams. Now, as we'll see in a few minutes as we work through some examples, you can use this not only for atoms, but you can also use this for molecules. Now, I'll explain how we do that in just a minute. So we're going to work through some problems. So the first problem says, what is the mass of 6.42 moles of aluminum? So to solve this problem, we're going to start by writing down what we're given, which is 6.42 moles of aluminum. And then we're going to set up a conversion factor. As we're trying to find mass over here, we started with moles. So we're going to set up a conversion where we're going to take the unit of moles and put it on the bottom of our fraction, moles of aluminum. And then we're going to put what we're trying to find, which is grams of aluminum, and that will go on top. And the relationship between moles and grams is that one mole of aluminum is 26.98 grams of aluminum. And the reason we set this up this way is because when we do this multiplication and division, if we have moles of aluminum up top here and moles of aluminum on the bottom there, the units will cancel out so that our answer will just be in grams of aluminum. So we take our calculator, we do 6.42 times 26.98 divided by one, and we enter that in, and we get 173.2116. So we'll call that 173.21 grams of aluminum. I would just, for the most part, as a general rule, round everything off to two decimal places. It's a good place to start with rounding. Right. Next, this asks how many moles is 52 grams of copper? So in this case, we're starting with 52 grams of copper, and we're trying to find moles. So if we start with grams, grams of copper, the thing we start with goes on the bottom. The thing we're trying to find goes on the top, moles of copper. And yes, moles is abbreviated M-O-L. Uh, so to go between grams and moles, we need the molar mass of copper, which is 63.55 grams is one mole. 63.55 grams is one mole. So we set this up, our units will cancel for grams leaving us with an answer in moles of copper. And so we just do some simple math. We take 52 times 1 over 63.55, and we get 0 0.82 moles of copper. Next, how many atoms are in 0 0.82? 3 moles of sodium. Now, in this problem, we're starting with moles of sodium, and we're trying to find atoms. So we're going between moles and particles. So for that, we need Avogadro's number. So one mole of sodium is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium. So to do this problem, we're going to take the 0 0.33 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Now to put scientific notation into your calculator, 
it's a little bit tricky. Um, there is a special button for it. And on your calculator, it's the button that has the little EE right there. So to access it, so we type in 6.022 and then we'll hit second and then we'll hit that little button. It also has a comma on it. And then the letter E appears on the screen. That means times 10 to the power of, and then we just punch in 23, All right? And then divided by one, because that's the denominator in our problem. And we press enter and we get 1.98726E23. So we're just gonna round this off to two decimal places. So we'll call that 1.99 times 10 to the 23rd, 1.99 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium. Let's look at the fourth problem. How many moles is 7.4 times 10 to the 24th atoms of gold? So we started with atoms of gold and we're trying to find moles of gold. The relationship is that one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So to put this in our calculator, we'll take 7.4, then we'll press the E24. And please do not confuse the scientific notation E, which is the capital E, with the inverse natural log over there. That's a very different thing. 7.4 E24 times 1 over 6.022 E23 times 10 to the 23rd. Then we press enter and we get 12.29 moles of gold. And by the way, the reason we have to use that special button for scientific notation is if you just try typing in 7.4 times 10, the little caret symbol 24 times one, then you hit divided by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, your calculator gets confused with order of operations and would try to then multiply everything. So you would get like 12.29 times 10 to the 47th is your answer which is uh, very wrong. So that little E symbol means that your calculator associates this whole thing as being one number and not that you're taking something and multiplying it by something else, right? Let's look at another one. Oh, 3.9 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of strontium. And it's asking us to find mass. So we're starting with particles and we're trying to go all the way over to mass. So this is going to require two conversions from particles to moles and then from moles to mass. So we're going to need to first go from atoms of strontium to moles of strontium. And then we'll need to go from moles of strontium to grams of strontium. Sorry. Oh, why did I say strontium? Let's say this is sulfur, not strontium. I, I apologize for that. We're going from atoms all the way to grams of sulfur. Sorry. So the conversion between moles and atoms. One mole is... 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sulfur. And one mole of sulfur is 32.07 grams of sulfur. So we're just going to chain this entire calculation together. We're not going to do two separate calculations. We're just going to do it all at once. So we're going to put in our calculator 3.9 E23 times 1 over 6.022 E23 times 32.07 over 1 equals 20.77 grams of sulfur. Okay. 
where this next problem, we're starting with 41 grams of lithium and we're trying to find how many atoms. So we're gonna need to go from grams to moles from grams to moles, and then from moles to atoms. So one mole of lithium is 6.941 grams. And then one mole of lithium is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So we do this math, 41 divided by, or times one over 6.941 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd over one equals 3.56 times 10 to the 24th atoms of lithium. For number seven, it wants to know how many moles is 100 grams of water. Well, now we're not working with atoms. We're working with a compound. So we've got a hundred grams of water and we're trying to go from grams to moles. Well, one mole of water, as you might would imagine, we're going to take the mass of hydrogen times two, because there's two hydrogens, plus the mass of oxygen. And that's what's called the molar mass of water. So we're going to take 1.008 times two plus the mass of oxygen. And that comes out to be 18.016. So that's the molar mass of water. Again, it's two hydrogens plus one oxygen. So we use that number. And then we'll treat this just like any other problem. So we get 5.55 moles of water. We'll look at a few more. What is the mass of 0.8 four moles of lead four nitrate. So we need to set up a conversion between moles and grams, where one mole is going to equal the mass of lead. So let's uh, calculate this molar mass real quick. You see lead is 207.20 plus We've got a nitrogen, 14.01, and we have four nitrogens, so times four, plus the mass of oxygen times, well, we've got three oxygens and nitrate, and we've got four nitrates. So we have not seven, but 12 oxygens. So we take... Once again, the mass of lead plus the mass of nitrogen times four plus the mass of oxygen times 12. And that comes out to be 455.24 grams per mole. That is the molar mass. 455.24. So we take that and we multiply that by the 0.84 and we come up with our final answer up to this problem, which is 382.40 grams of lead for nitrate. Number nine. Oh boy. How many molecules is 62 grams of glucose? So we're starting with grams, and we have to go all the way to particles. This is like as complicated as these problems can get. It's two steps. We're going from grams to moles first, and then we'll go from moles to molecules. 
So to go from grams to moles, one mole is going to equal the mass of carbon times 6 plus the mass of hydrogen times 12 plus the mass of oxygen times 6. which is 180.156 grams per mole. So it's 108, 180.0, I sorry, 180.156 grams per mole. And then to go between moles and molecules, one mole is Avogadro's number of molecules. So, we plug all of this into our calculator and we get 2.07 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Don't forget the times 10 to the 23rd. It makes a big difference. Uh, you're talking about 207 sextillion molecules versus just 2.07 molecules. All right, last example. What is the mass of 5.7 times 10 to the 24th formula units of ammonium phosphate? And by the way, formula units is the technical term for individual parts of an ionic compound. But formula units and molecules are essentially like the same thing, just Molecules is for covalent compounds. So we're trying to go from particles all the way over to grams. So the first step is going to go from formula units to moles. And our second step will take us from moles to grams. The relationship between, uh, relationship between Moles and formula units is that one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. So we're starting with particles to moles using Avogadro's number. And then we'll go from moles to grams using the molar mass, where one mole equals. Now for this one, we need the mass of nitrogen, which is 14.01 times 3. Let me write that a little better. 14.01 times 3 plus the mass of hydrogen, 1.008 times 12 plus the mass of phosphorus, 30.97 plus the mass of oxygen times 4. So that's a big number. So 149.096. So now we just do all of the math with the multiplying and the dividing. 5.7 times 10 to the 24th times 1 over 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd times 149.096 divided by 1. And that equals 1,000. 411.24 grams. So I hope this helps you understand this a little better. If you need to go back and rewatch any parts of this video, feel free to do.